but um, sometimes things are so embarrassing, we immediately lie, don't we? You ever been there? We, I, I do it now, and then I catch myself, and I'm like, no. Um, but sometimes some things are so embarrassing, there's an automatic trigger sometimes in our head, which is like, no, I've got to, I've got to cover it up. I've got to instantly cover it up, because it's just too embarrassing to let other people know what's going on. Now, if it's your flies undone, okay, or if it's... Um, if it's something completely embarrassing, then fair enough, like a tear in the trousers or something. Um, but if it's, um, if it's just something silly that you should own up to, like you stole something from work and you should have owned up to it, or like you really weren't off sick that day and you shouldn't have called in, Ooh. Um, or, or you really shouldn't have been out with your mates and you said to your wife you were out working, um, because these little lies often become bigger and bigger and bigger the longer we allow them to go on. Now, sometimes we think that we're smart and we know best. And I don't know um, how else to describe this than to refer back to my medical days, so I will. When I was in hospital, sometimes we'd have somebody come in, we'd diagnose a cancer, and we would... Um, we would have to decide how are we going to tell them the bad news. Who is going to do it? It was usually me. Um, and who are we going to involve? Do we tell the family first or do we otherwise not and everything else? And I've got two stories which kind of illustrate the difficulties that go on. One, one day we diagnosed the tumor on an operation. So it was a laparotomy and proceed, just open them up and find out what's going on. And we found riddled with cancer inside. And so we, there's nothing we can do other than close up. And we were going out, and the family were all outside the operating theater. And they grabbed the consultant, not literally, they grabbed the consultant, and they said, we need to know what's going on, we need to get what's going on, what's going on. And the consultant, in his wisdom, um, decided to tell them. So he told them what he'd found at operation, that it was a tumor, and it was riddled on the inside and everything else. And um, the lady was wheeled back to the ward and was in the ward for a little while. And then when she started to come round and she was lucid, I was the one that was sent in to go and break the bad news. So I went in to break the bad news, what we found. By now the histology was back, so we knew what it was. And um, she said to me, she said, don't tell my family. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, yikes. Um. I said, what did you say at that point? Okay. Um, I said, I'll, um, I'll need to go and speak to my consultant. Okay, because I can put the blame on him. Um, I'll need to go and speak to my consultant. But I, I said, I'm not sure that's possible for us to do. We got in a lot of trouble for that. Because whose information is it? And sometimes we will take somebody's information and we will make it bigger than it is. Or we will take some of the information and we will use it for ourselves. Not only is that theft, but that's bearing false witness. And we were betraying a relationship we should never have betrayed. Do you think that lady trusted her doctors with anything else after that? If, if you lie about somebody, you might think it's the smallest thing. You might think you're doing it with the best of intentions double check before you do. If you tell the truth to somebody and that truth belongs to somebody else and you're doing it out of the best of intentions and emotions because you're surrounded by a whole group of people that desperately want to know what's going on, be careful what you say. Be careful how you deal with it because that truth may not belong to you.